Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Stephen Jurdy here at Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau, Wisconsin, and Bethany Lutheran Church in Anawa to share with you a word at the middle of the week. This week is our very last love letter to Central Wisconsin. It has been my joy and privilege to have served in Central Wisconsin for almost 20 years, beginning first in Western Marathon County in Clark County, and now serving here right in the center of Marathon County uh, in a ministry that extends far and wide to my great joy and uh, to my great, my great happiness uh, as I serve with you, with my fellow pastors, Pastor Joseph Penzel and Pastor Christopher Johnson. It has indeed been a joy. And as I have reflected on our life here in central Wisconsin, we've talked about several different topics. We've talked about land and the beautiful land in which we live, also the people who are our neighbors and among whom uh, God has set us all to be a light to the world. We've talked about how we use time, how we view sports. Uh, we've talked about church life in central Wisconsin. And today I would like to talk with you about something very near and dear uh, to our culture here, something very central to our culture, not only in central Wisconsin, but in all of Wisconsin, and that is hunting. Uh, hunting has already begun with the bow season, and pretty soon in November we'll have the opening weekend that everyone talks about, as pretty soon we'll be seeing camouflage and uh, bright blaze orange hanging from the porches as they get aired out with the hunters coming home, uh, hopefully uh, having been successful out there in the woods. I wanted to talk with you about the hunt because sometimes people have questions about that. Is hunting something that is good? Should people be hunting? Is it something that Christians can do? Uh, there are those who say, no, Christians shouldn't hunt. There are those who say that Christians even should be vegetarians and not eat meat at all. And so because it's something that is so common uh, to our life here in this central part of the state, uh, and other places, I thought, well, it's, it's good to share what Holy Scripture does tell us about hunting and how we can enter into that activity with faith and with thanksgiving. So probably the first place to start is to begin by talking about animals in general and what is the place that animals have in creation. And we, we find, when we look at Holy Scripture, is that animals are a part of God's beloved work. He loves the animals that he has made, and they do have a particular dignity. So, for example, at the end of Genesis chapter 1, as God has created all things, it says that God looked at all that he made, and he saw that it was very good. Very good. All that God has made is very good. That includes the deer. It includes the turkeys. Uh, it includes bear. It includes other things that we might hunt. Everything from the heights of the clouds down to the depths of the earth, everything that crawls, everything that flies and swims. God looked at it and he saw that it was very good. And of course, that is a judgment then from God that he's rendered on what he has made. It is good. And so when we look at the animals around us, it's good to remember they're good. And God loves them. Not only does God love them, but God actually continues to care for them. In Psalm 104, we're told that God provides the grass for the cattle, uh, that every creature looks to him to be fed in due season. And when he opens his hand, they are satisfied. And so um, God's care and providence are upon all the animals. And indeed, there are certain points in Holy Scripture where we're told that the animals actually enter into Praise of God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, says Psalm 150. And earlier we are told in the book of Genesis that animals have the breath of life in them. And I believe in Psalm 148, we have, there we have another um, hymn of praise in which all of creation is called upon to praise God from the mountain heights to the depths of the valleys to the fruit trees and cedars and and everything else. So all of creation has this love of God resting upon it. Animals are part of that favor, uh, that provision. At the same time, God has created everything in its order. So we're told, 
For example, in the book of Matthew, that's in Matthew chapter 10, in Matthew chapter 10, we're told that God's eye is on the sparrow and not a sparrow falls to the earth apart from the Father, meaning that the Father is so intimately uh, committed to his creation, including the animal kingdom, that not even an animal dies without God not only taking notice, but without God being there. You know, that, the language there talks about a, a bird falling to the earth, not apart from the Father. The Father is with the bird um, in, the, in the midst of that death. At the same time, this passage says, are you not worth more, speaking to the, the, the listeners of Jesus, are you not worth more than many sparrows, more than many birds? Uh, even the hairs of your head are, are counted. And so there is, everything is very good, but there's an order to creation. Humankind has been placed in some kind of dominion over creation. And we're also then told that animals are, are, are provided as food for the human community. And we have that at several different points in Holy Scripture. Uh, first of all, we have in... Uh, Acts chapter 10, a rather interesting event where the disciple Peter is really hungry <laughs> and he falls into a trance of a sort. And as he is in this state, he has a vision of a sheet, a giant sheet being lowered from heaven with every kind of animal in it and reptiles and birds. And then a voice from heaven says to Peter, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And so there we have, you know, very clearly, uh, a divine message coming to to a man, telling him, "You may you may kill and eat uh, these animals." And in fact, in Genesis chapter, uh, not sure, Genesis cha Genesis chapter ten, I guess that is Genesis ten. Um, there is a man named Nimrod. We don't know much about Nimrod except that he is a mighty hunter before the Lord. And that phrase, before the Lord, tells us, again, sort of like the sparrow does not fall to the earth apart from the Father, Nimrod was before the Lord, he was with the Lord, the Lord was with him. In the midst of his hunting, uh, the Lord was with him, and he was with the Lord. And so hunting receives uh, an approval from God there, and Nimrod is actually famed for it. He is uh, remembered for it, and has, uh, and and he's remembered for that hunting to be really part of his walk with God, part of his life with God. All of which brings us then to these beautiful words in First Timothy chapter four, in which Saint Paul writes, "For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer." So. Uh, there he's talking specifically about food, also marriage, other aspects of the created life that we live. Everything is good, and it is to be received uh, with thanksgiving in the conviction that it is good and that you can receive it with a good, clean conscience. So, as you or others you know head out into the woods uh, this season and in the month coming up, there are probably couple things to keep in mind. One, remember that the creatures you're going out there to be with and to hunt are creatures of God first. They have a dignity and a beauty that has been given them by God. You are with all of those animals, creatures under God and before God. And, that, and, and all of us in this creation then are called to be gathered up into praise of the Heavenly Father. At the same time, and for that reason then, whatever interaction we have with the animal kingdom, whether it be hunting or, or maybe as, a, as an owner of a pet or whatever it is, we are to interact with those animals with that kind of dignity in mind, that they deserve to be treated with dignity. They also should be received with thanksgiving. Can you kill them in the hunt? You may. And can you enjoy them? You may. Venison stew, it's very good. Venison sausage. I remember my very first call. I mean, I had not eaten much venison. I uh, grew up in the, in the cornfields of Illinois, so I didn't know much about uh, hunting. Not many people hunted down there when I was a boy. 
Uh, we did not have venison by any means on the table. Uh, but when I came to my first call, they would serve venison sausage after every Lenten service. Mm -hmm. And it was delicious, right? And, and venison stew and other things that we can do with it. So you may eat it, do so with thanksgiving, do so humbly before God, do so recognizing that we are together uh, part of this beautiful creation that God has made and that therefore uh, we are blessed, blessed to be uh, living, to have life. We're blessed to be living in central Wisconsin. As I said, it is a privilege to uh, be a pastor here. It's a privilege to be your neighbor here. And when I say that, I speak on behalf of all the pastors at Zion. It is a privilege to share the gospel here, the, the fantastic, beautiful gospel that our Lord Jesus Christ gave his life for the sins of the world, and therefore uh, his blood forgives us all of our sins, and we may live our life here in central Wisconsin and wherever we may be, uh, giving thanks to the favor of God that has come to rest upon us. God's peace be with you.